Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Um, last go around, we like went through the idea of what the suspension needs to do, at least ideally, and we're gonna have to see how close we can work our way towards those. Okay. Right, dog's yelling. All right, gang, uh, today, we sort of gotta commit to a couple of things. Now hold on, if you just ran for the door, because of the word commit or commitment, it's gonna be okay. We're still talking about hot rods. Refresher, for those of you just joining us, I'm Ryan, this is a Model T, this is on a Model A frame, and we've got some Model A coupe fenders that we're gonna run. In a second, we'll take a look at how it all fits together, but in the previous video, I was working through the suspension situation and what we want to do and sort of reminding myself of like the ideal geometry. I don't know how close we're going to get to it, but you know, all the things I need to think about when I was setting this up. It's one of the things about building a hot rod is that at a certain point, you sort of just have to have it all and it all has to be there at once. You know, you need weight on the springs and you need the right tire size and you need all the stuff. and. Anything you don't have, there's ways around like, you know, how to... Dog's, dog's enthusiastic about this. There are ways to approximate, but the more you have, the better off you're gonna be. So, what I realized and what I wasn't 100% sure about was this, right? This here, this. Because I want the tire up in the wheel well. I'm not going for like the super, super slammed look, but I do want it looking like the tire belongs in this fender. Now, like I said, this is a Model A coupe fender on a Model T touring body, and it doesn't fit at all. So in order to get that relationship, like, actually dialed in and get the suspension built for the look that I'm going for, you see, well, I've got to actually land this body on this frame. Good old-fashioned gravity is holding it down, and this fender is kind of clamped on. You can see it doesn't fit at all but it's going to, it can. The running boards and the front fenders are somewhat lined up because I got lucky enough that the frame still had the original mounting holes. So I've got a little bolt holding the back piece in. Everything else is just kind of lined up by eyeball. So that's what we're working with. Now I hear rumors that a Model T subframe, hey, hey, look, I got another one right here that actually has a subframe as of this weekend. I hear that this mounting hole is actually really, 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 really close to the correct mounting point on the Model A frame, which is the end of the cross member. Let's see, that guy over yonder. Now, of course, the subframe for this thing was broken in half, bent, and missing large chunks. So it was unsalvageable. And frankly, I couldn't even measure the thing. So uh, we built one based on our best guess, sort of like working from the door gaps and I hope we're close. You know what I mean? Hope oh, we're close. If NASA comes and measures this, we'll find it's not up to spec. I'm, I'm pretty certain about that. But we gotta, we gotta put this body on the frame. We gotta get it at least clamped, if not bolted. Then we can start addressing how the fenders are gonna fit, which is something that I'm excited about and also somewhat nervous about because it's not very easy to find Model A fenders around. They're not rare, but they're not like, I can't just go get another one if I muck this up. And it just turns out that the set I have are pretty darn nice, like far nicer than the car. So I hope I don't screw it up. In order to get the rear end sitting correctly or the rear tire sitting correctly in the wheel well, we need the wheel well to be in the right place. Let's give it a once over about what we're using as a standard because hot rods and customs are just that. You know, they're hot rods and custom by definition. So there's a couple of things I'm using on the Model A frame and that I'm keeping as my like starting point and then we are going to develop it out from there. Specifically for old hot rods, uh, if you've got fenders or no fenders or whatever, the starting point really ought to be the rear wheel well. So we're gonna use this <laughs> conveniently stashed little roadster as an example, just because I've got a fender on this side kind of mocked up at the moment. If you're running fender or fenderless, if the wheel is not centered in the wheel well, 
it's gonna look weird. It's never gonna look right. It doesn't matter if you do a custom frame. It doesn't matter if you use a stock existing frame. You can make the frame as long as you want, but, and you can mount the rear axle any way you want, you know, like transverse spring, coil springs, leaf springs, doesn't, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is that the end result of that puts your wheel, you know, in a good looking spot in your wheel wheel. Cause if it's off, there's no fixing that, man. We got to deal with that. For this guy over here, we are trying our best, we, me, I'm trying my best to leave the frame stock length and stock wheelbase because of the fender length and there's just a lot of things. That's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave the stock Model A wheelbase, which I think is 103 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and line up our rear end with this cross member right to left. And reality is we don't even need the rear end to do this. We just need to line our wheel wells up front to back with this Model A cross member because with a Model A, the spring was over the rear axle, centered on the rear axle, centered on this cross member. So we center our wheel well with the cross member and we use that cross member for our spring and our spring to attach our rear end. All those pieces ought to line up and then we will work forward. We have to get it centered right to left as well. This is gonna look really cool. Uh, but we got to snatch it off of here for now. Spiders. Look at these fenders. Right? Like. Right? So, little story about those fenders when we take our first look. These showed up on Craigslist. Uh, I had this body. Drove about two hours to go get them because they were 200 American dollars. And I got there and. I don't want to judge the guy because he was doing a pretty nice job, but basically he had a Model A coupe that had been restored and was super sharp and he was turning it into a hot rod. So I don't know. I love hot rods, but I love building hot rods out of junk. I couldn't take a restored Model T and do this to it. I just couldn't because, you know, I like all kinds of stuff. I mean, this fascinates me. Like, where has it been? What has it done? I can turn it into something and get it back on the road. It was really just a scrap heap. But, you know, I also get that, like, neat factor out of the antiquers or the original stuff or the res even restorations. It's like, dog, what are you doing? Jump back. Did I already mark this? Let's take a look. All right, so generally speaking, the place to start looking for the center of your wheel well is the highest point. This is not an optical delusion. This is not like a circular radius. This is clearly an ellipse. Without the whole ellipse, it's quite difficult and a geometrical high school problem to figure out really where, you know what I'm saying? So your eyeball is going to be your kind of your best friend, hold a wheel up, figure it out. Because the touring rear end, you know. I, I, the other fenders would just sweep off like a ducktail. But if we spin around, I just love showing this road strut, don't I? This is a different shaped wheel well, or there's just more of it. I'm inclined to actually pattern this to see if it fits over here, or if this is actually a different shape. Because I measured this one. Doug, what are you doing? Oh, is your tennis ball over there? I can hook onto the outside of that bead and over to here and look and that's 31 and a half. I know 15 and a quarter is at least a good place to start looking for the center of my wheel well. Uh, I don't really have that here. Should we pattern it? I don't know. Maybe. Is that a waste of time? Yep. Should we do it anyway? Probably. Yeah, we're just going to start at the front. This isn't quite large enough, but this is just for experiment's sake because I should probably do a whole video on comparing a 27 Roadster body to a 27 Touring body. Get some real measurements because the one that I'm getting this pattern off of it looks like it's never been apart. It may be rusty, but it's straighter than anything I've ever had. All right, so I went ahead and cut that out. The second episode where I'm using like paper cutouts. I'm an arts and crafts show before long. Who's ready to make wedding centerpieces out of pine cones? All right, well, that was unexpected. The radius is 
very similar, but that corner, I can't, I don't have enough hands because I'm holding up the paper, but you know what I'm saying? That corner right there was actually lined up right there. Maybe, I mean, based on the way that finishes off, that's factory. So I don't know that that wheel well extended any further down, but on the T touring body, it extends down, I don't know, six inches here to here, five and a half inches, something like that. So I just went ahead and put a mark where I think center is. I did some measuring and none of that stuff worked out. Sometimes you just gotta use your good old fashioned eyeball and judgment. Um, yeah, there's just not, it's not a regular shape. It is kind of a pretty line. So the way I'm doing this is, you know, also remember the body's leaning down this way right now, you know, it's raked. So I'm really looking at what I think is the highest point in this wheel well, and I want to match that up with what the highest point of the tire is, and that is my best judgment. So now, because this body is independent of the frame, I need to line this up with the center of this cross member, which we're pretty close. And then once it's centered front to back, we need to center it this way. All right, gang, don't know if this is going to work, but I may as well bring you right along because, you know, if success happens, then that's wonderful. So I've got my mark using my government issue eyeball calipers, and now I need to make a line out of a single point. And um, in order to do that, level is not a thing in hot routing, really, personally, I don't think. Just because it's all, you know relative to what like if i put a level on this it, it's not in the it's not it's not related to the body uh i guess i could find the angle of the subframe and adjust the level you know what i mean anyway here's what i'm gonna do the doors are generally speaking vertical lines on a stock model t body they're straight these edges at least both the front and rear doors so i'm just going to pull a measurement off the bottom of the rear door Eight and three quarters. Cool. Go ahead and put some tape up here so I can make another mark. Do not, I repeat, do not use Sharpies on your body if you can help it, even if you're planning on painting it. I've seen Sharpies come through primer. Just use a pencil. It's gonna be okay. A chalk, grease pen, a chalk. So anyway, let's make another mark at eight and three quarters. I mean, this is not rocket surgery, you know what I mean? Not trying to get a man to the moon, you're just trying to get yourself to the hamburger stand. So now, I'm gonna just try to use this tape to create a straight line, literally using the tape edge to line up these two points. ish something like that sure i don't know maybe it looks straight enough to me of course that happened right there i'll buy that i will call that a thing for now i mean we're gonna go with it so we'll go eight and three quarters off our door on the other side, make a mark there. Then we'll shuffle this body until we're, you know, centered on this cross member, which is pretty easy to see. All right, so I feel like I've got the back end of this car in a reasonably good spot. Uh, I'll show you what I did just as a pointers, but uh, specifically, it doesn't really make any difference what I did. Generally speaking, these cars are not in any way round or square. I know, that feels weird. But basically they're egg-shaped. They have these really pretty Jessica Rabbit curves. What that means is your most common measuring tools don't really do anything for you. There's really nothing to square off of. Everything is a taper. Meaning, even look at this line right here. I must have drawn it with a square. Well, sure, that's square to this edge, but unless you adjust for this angle, off the center line, it's not pointing in any way that's super relevant. So, 
find yourself symmetrical spots that you can measure from. On this one, I measured from this edge of the wheel well out to the fender after I went ahead and put a bolt in the fender aprons on both sides to line those up. That gave me, you know, within an eighth maybe. Then I measured from the end of the cross member. Then I took a line off the center of this piece and lined it up with the bolt. No one of these measurements was enough for me to be convinced, but all of them together said, well, this is kind of the best. Now this brings up another point. I know I'm just jibber jabbering, but this stuff's really hard. If you don't know where to find your reference point, if you've channeled a car or you've got a car as rotten as this one, and hey guys, 100 year old cars are getting harder to find. So sometimes you just gotta work with what you can get. Finding a reference point is tricky. Now, if you had the original cross pieces, which I use the original ones, but again, their relationship to the sub rails, uh, you know, there's, there's probably at least an eighth inch between these two that are off, if not a little bit more. But you could maybe run your center line straight up through the thing. Maybe that's an option. I don't know. I'm just saying you got to use as many reference points as you possibly can and like center it based on an average. So I guess what I'm saying is your combination squares and your speed squares and your carpenter squares and you know, your plumb bobs and your levels don't really do you a whole lot of good here because very little is actually a straight line, very little of it's square. And that's why they're so pretty. So the thing about it is just use multiple reference points, find basically your average and then use your eyeball. If all your measurements, are a little off, but they're all really close. And every time you move one, you're moving another one further out of whack. You'll find the balance, then take a step back and just check everything with your eyeball. And you know what? It's gonna be, it's gonna be good enough. Right, right, right. Let's do that. So yeah, let's do that. If you're gonna put weird fenders on your hot rod, ones that don't belong with the car that you have, uh, I don't know why you would, but uh, all right, cause I think it'll look cool. So that's what I'm doing. So I found eyeball, you know, my wheel well center line, was able to transfer that to the other side. Great, that's good. Kind of line that up with the center of the cross member, which is the center of the spring over the center of the axle. But then the other thing I need to contend with is I placed these Model A fenders by landing some bolts and this curve right here, this is where the fender needs to meet. So. My wheel well is one line that I need to make up, but another one is sort of needing this fender to sort of terminate where it should with this fender. Now granted, I'm gonna modify the fender, but you know, just by looking at it, you can tell that this point kind of wants to be right in here somewhere. So I'm gonna split the difference between where this wants to be and where I eyeball this wants to be because neither of them are exact measurements. After a lot of shuffling, like I said, just do your best, measure as many reference points as you can and sort of split the difference until they're all kind of even. It's, it's my best advice. I think it's your best bet. It's what I did. Then I went ahead and made two quick body mounts that went through the original hole in the cross member. Uh, if you recognize those, maybe you recognize those. I use Unistrut hardware a lot for stuff like this. I grind off the zinc coating when I need a really good weld, but they come pre-drilled, they're square, uh, and they come with different bolt sizes. You'll find them in your basic home improvement store. Let me see if I can find one. Um, and Unistrut is all rated hardware, you know, not that this is necessarily needs to be rated, but it is rated to actually hang stuff overhead. So I use these, grind off the zinc coating, and they're super helpful. You can get them in three quarter or, I don't know, you get them in all sorts of different bolt sizes. So pro tip, just for you fellas. And they're cheap. I also do actually, anytime I'm ordering from Speedway, I order weird brackets with holes in them. I've got these ones, and I've got like these weird little like brake line holes. You know, there's, it just, there are a lot of times that you need a small but thick piece of steel with a hole in it. And um, I have scars from doing that on the drill press. So I'm just saying, um, have them in stock, it helps out. All right, guys, I've been studying on this for a long time. Like it's just been in here 
been kind of tinkering on it. It's been back on the frame for, you know, several months now. And I just, I'm thinking, having visions of what it's supposed to be, right? And look at this line, right? Just follow this nice, like pretty curve that swings down and then the radius changes right here where it hits the Model A fender and it becomes, you know, feels like it kind of wants to continue to like here, right? Right? So let's let's put the fender up there and just sort of see what it wants to do. We'll try it first lighting. First, we'll line it up with the Model A fender and then I want to show you something that I kind of figured out. All right, I'm holding the fender up, so I'm gonna do my best here. The back is just a little high. You can kind of see where it pops out of the wheel well right there, but that's kind of Model A-ish right there. And we come around and we don't really fit. We sort of line up there. I mean, it's pretty clear that the fender is being pushed out in the center. So we're gonna to have to trim basically a line, something, it's not gonna be that line, so it's a different car, but something like that to get the center and the top of the fender to tuck in just a little bit. But here's, here's what I'm seeing. So the body's trying to force it into sort of a sleeker line so we could cut it and radius it and figure that out. But I would like this part, you know, to kind of line up there a little bit. Yeah. So. Basically, in order for it to line up with itself, meaning the fender apron and the rear fender, this has to rotate upwards, you know, because this bottom part, oh dear, is in the right, this is in the right place. So in order for this to meet up, the fender has to go in and the fender has to rotate upwards and then it would land here. Now that would make this way higher on the car and all sorts of other weird stuff. Now, the other thing that I've noticed, um, when you're building a hot rod or custom, it's never been easier, boys, to just, on the internet. Uh, I also have a bunch of old books and stuff from before, you know, internet times, actually. Uh, at least when pictures were so prevalent. So, anyway, you should study on every kind of car that's similar to one you might be doing because you're gonna find all of the stuff that you like, but what's way more important is find the stuff that rubs you wrong. So. One of the things that I've been noticing, a lot of the full fendered Model A cars, whether they're coupes, touring cars, you know, it doesn't really, sedans, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, this relationship, this rear tire and the rear fender, a lot of them sit really high. And I think I'm okay with that. I don't love it, but most of the cars in the 50s and early 60s definitely had sort of like a reverse die spring and that was kind of it. You could tell, or at least I, I think, the way that they're running it was just lowering it with a stock cross member, stock spring setup, not really Zing it, just building a hot rod out of a Model A. And there's nothing wrong with that. It actually does look kind of cool, especially right now, because most cars that are being built these days aren't fendered and are slammed. And it's not that I don't like them, but it just, it's become sort of one style. Now, anything I do here is really not gonna be new groundbreaking in any way, shape or form. I'm just copying the stuff that I like the best that I fell in love with that made me wanna build my own hot rod, right? Which is just other people's hot rods. And I'm perfectly comfortable saying that. But anyway, um, that's the long explanation for me saying I don't hate these fenders not fitting in, you know, the wheel not fitting in the fender totally. But, but here's this other thing that I discovered. Watch this. All right, I'm gonna try to film this coming to life because, you know, here you go, you can see the shape. The wheel is centered on our cross member. The fender apron is sort of where it's supposed to be because it's bolted in two, which is placing the front of our rear fender. So in theory, That is where the Model A fender would really want to sit, which blocks our door and among other things, but you can tell that the shape is kind of right for a Model A. But watch this. All right, can you feel that? I know it's not right, but, but, but just squint for a second with me here. It's a lot to be desired here, but I want you to check out a couple of things. You know, this is like, 
I don't know. This is like the super fun part of hot rodding and custom car building. It's like getting to play a little jazz using what you think looks right. So I want to show you how this is fitting now. So what I've done is I scooted the fender forward, you know, roughly, probably, well, I got a tape measure here. What do we got? So that's roughly two inches. Sure, great. We've lifted it up from stock because it's sitting on top of the running board, but maybe that could go back down a little bit. But look at how that body line actually works. And because we've sort of rotated it, because the radius is what it is, it's actually dropped the back end of it low, which I kinda, I kinda think I like because it just continues this line. And instead of ending here where the normal Model A fender would, it kinda finishes the idea. It may be a little too much, but if that's the case, we can bob that. But, but this, first of all, this fitment is pretty nice. It looks pretty decent. If we could get it lower and get the tire tucked in. Now, of course we are gonna use, oh God, not enough hands. This is gonna end in disaster. Here we go. Hold on, don't get sick. We're going full Blair Witch Hunting. If we use this more meaty tire, we're like kind of styling, or at least getting closer to styling. But with this, there's suddenly magical room to correct something, maybe correct something, that has always kind of made me, you know, kind of, want to fix full fendered Model A's. Let's go to the front of the car and see if you guys see what I see and see if you, you know, kind of agree. And then we're gonna continue to do some mocking up. Guys, we're, this is ball of wax. Like we're gonna, more than we can chew. Whew. All right, gang, welcome to the front of the car. Here's what we're here to see. Can you see it? So right now it's a drop axle mounted on a transverse spring in the stock Model A cross member on the stock Model A frames. Let's give a little scan. You see it? Here's, here's the thing that has always driven me kind of nuts when I see full fendered Model A hot rods. And I can't figure out what it is. I can't tell if it's because the wire wheels were like 20 inches or 19 inches or something, but the highest point of the fender is like right here. It looks like the wheels are too far forward in the fender or vice versa, reverse that. And the fender is too far back in the wheel well because it just, it feels like the center of the wheel wants to be here. Or at least that's what it has always been in my mind. I don't, like that's what I'm seeing. Fortunately, it's a hot rod we're doing custom things to it. So whatever I think it should be, should I have the will and the work ethic, I can make it be. Let's review. What happens if I slide this fender, apron, skirt, the two and a half inches I have here, and it would just keep on sliding, keep on sliding until our front fender moved to where I think it should go. Will that affect other things? Yes, absolutely. None of the mounting holes will line up anymore, but we can drill new ones. The headlight bar is actually attached to the fender mounts that bolt to the frame. They will not be in the right place anymore. We'll have three holes, no, sorry, two holes here that may need to be filled and moved back here. Can we do all of that? Yes, yes we can, we have tools, we have will. Am I right about how this should look? I don't know, but I think so. So uh, the best way to find out before I start hacking up that fender is to unbolt this apron, slide it down, make that rear fender fit, and then we are gonna review if this looks more better.
All right, fellas. It's only about two inches. You can kind of, I mean, this is loose, but you can see this mounting bracket hole here. But it, to me, it looks a thousand times better. Now, I am not against Radical Customs or severe chops or any of that stuff, you know, but I think stylistically for me, if you're doing something custom, right? If it looks really good, sometimes it can look so good that people don't get why it looks so good. Like they can't tell that you customized it. They just, the proportions are right or whatever. I mean, in early 50s cars, sometimes a subtle chop, like I've seen cars chopped one inch. That's so much work to get that sort of top chopped one inch, but sometimes that's exactly exactly what it needs and you can't tell why that one looks better than every other one you've ever seen and it's a subtle difference i'm not uh, trust me i'm not getting on my high horse about this but if i've moved this fender forward just enough because that's what works for my eye that gets us to the back end this lines up we've shifted everything this way a little bit we have some interference with the body mount under here but i can fix that then our rear fender Kind of does this nice swoopy thing, carries up, and then swoops down. So with the bigger tire in here, now granted we have work to do because if you look at it this way, you can see that it's kicked out. So we are gonna have to trim this fender. We'll lean it in. This is gonna need a little bit of an extension to meet up right here, but this is an easy place to hide some metal work. I mean, I really think we're, we're onto something. I mean, this thing, Getting a little bit of perspective back here. I think we can adjust that radius just to fuzz to match that back there. And then cruising along. I think that looks right. What a weird episode. So this is, this is a big decision because I think it's right. Um, we'll have to move here are some of the other things it affects too. Um, exactly where the radiator cutout was for the fenders moved a little bit. I can live with that. You can see this one fender is actually pulled forward. I think it looks slightly better. Uh, the headlight bars will need to be pushed back. That's where it was. That's where it is. Um, the bracket that mounts to the fender and to the frame will have to move to hold the headlight mounts. So, well, actually that's not true. We'll just have to drill new holes. Basically we'll have to drill a new hole for this thing here and then the headlights here. The biggest issue with committing to this is this is a compound curve, this fender, and it's got a match to another compound curve. So I really do have to decide on where I'm going to try to make it fit because it has to fit to a lot of things. It has to fit to the body and back to the fender apron and the running board. So this is a cut once kind of deal. Um, and the reason is it's probably, well, here's what I mean. I've gotta be pretty sure about where I wanna cut it because what is most likely going to happen is I will cut it once and then I will be grinding and trimming away until it fits because I don't wanna cut too much which means putting it back together is gonna to be very difficult unless I can come up with a very clever way to scribe this and get it right the first time, which I need to think on. So, what started as a lining up the body video is now are we doing a bunch of custom fender work? And the answer is I believe so. The question is, is it this version? So. I need to sit here and stare at it. And I think the healthiest, most best thing to do, even though I'm super excited about it because I'm really happy with it right now, is to walk away, well, to sit and stare at it, go get some sleep for the night and come back out and just look at it. And if it looks right, then, then I think it's gonna be right. And then we're gonna figure out how to match it on the other side. So I'm, the grin is creeping across my face. 
All right, gang, uh, thanks for watching Between the Sharks. This was a lot of process and not a lot of progress yet, but that's a lot of what this, uh, what this channel is about. But anyway, enough rambling. Thanks for watching Between the Sharks. I'm pretty excited about how this is taking shape. I'm gonna look at it in the morning, and if it still looks as good as I think it looks right now, we're gonna make it look even better by trimming and fitting all this. And then somehow, we're gonna have to match the other side, which is not identical, it's indeed mirrored. Anyway, good luck on your projects out there. We will see you next time on Between the Sharks.